For simulating an HTTP service, first let's add three computers. All right. Then we need four servers. Let's add two here and two here. Okay. Now for connecting all of this together, we need a switch. And let's add a switch at the middle and go connect all of them together. Okay, it's done. And now uh, let's det determine which server we're going to do what. Uh, so in order to have a, an HTTP service that um, we can open up websites, we can create websites, and uh, the clients can access our websites, uh, we, need an, uh, we need an HTTP uh, server, which are the uh, our website servers, which is going to be these two. One of them is going to be Google server, one of them is going to be Yahoo server, just for examples. So, and uh, the other server is going to be, one of them is going to be the DNS, and the other one going to be the uh, DHCP server. So the DHCP for uh, giving our computers uh, the dynamic IP, and the DNS, I will tell you in a second how we're going to use it. First, we need to see how the DNS works. So in previous videos, we understand it that uh, in order to communicate from one computer to another computer, uh, the both need to uh, have an IP address. And um, so in, uh, when the, uh, the two computers have the IP address, we can communicate between those two. And in order to communicate with a server, we also need an IP address. So the way that um, the website works is that inside that server, we have all of the files of our website. Any request that we send, it will be processed and show us a static page from the server. So we are communicating with the server directly um, from uh, when we send a request from our browser. But um, the way that we are communicating is with the IP. But why do we uh, why do we have an address for Google.com? How does it know that which IP address it's going to connect to? So that's what the DNS does. The DNS have a list of IP addresses and of domains. So it will connect each domain to the IP address. Let's see how. For example, uh, it have a list, let's say it says google.com has an IP address of 192.168.1.1. It has a list like this. So it says this, uh, this address has has this IP address. Okay. And uh, let's have it here. And um, the way that uh, we do communicate now with the server is to first, we will send a request uh, to the DNS, we say, we, uh, which IP address is this address connected to? and it will give us the IP address. Then we send our request to the server that has that IP address. All right, so now let's set a name for these servers. So this is going to be DHCP. This is going to be the DNS. Let's say this is Google servers and this is Yahoo. All right, now each of them need an IP address. So 
For the computers, it is a DHCP. DHCP is going to have an automatic address for the computers. But for the other servers, we need an, a static IP. So for servers, we cannot add an IP address with a DHCP and automatic ad IP address because it's, it might change uh, when we turn off and turn on the servers. And uh, so that's why we need an a static IP address. So let's set an static IP address for our servers. Go to the desktop, IP configuration. And in here, let's add 192.168.1.1. This is going to be for Google. And I will copy this. And for Yahoo, I will add this. Maybe the difference of one number. It's going to be 192.168.1.2. And um, Let's say that the DHCP gonna be three, and the DNS gonna be four. Now there is a very uh, important thing that uh, most of the people forgot to do is to set the DNS for the DHCP. So let's go to the services and configure our DHCP. In order to uh, configure the DHCP first, we need to turn off all of the other options except DHCP. Let's turn off them first. Okay, turn it off, turn it off, and uh. all right, now let's go to the DHCP and turn on the DHCP. So here we need to set first a DNS server because uh, we need to have, we have a DNS server that gonna have a list of the IP addresses and the uh, domains so in order to connect automatically to that dns we needed to set it in here for the computers and the dns going to be 192 168 1 and uh, it was 4 for the dns okay and i'm going to say the ip addresses i want to i want them to start from 10 so for computers it's going to be from 10 and save it all right the dns is ready and uh, oh sorry the dhcp is ready and let's set the ip address of our computer to dhcp okay the dhcp request was successful we can see the dns server will be set automatically with the dhcp as i told you okay and set this to DHCP as well, and this one as well. All right, now we are ready to do our things. So the thing that uh, the first thing we're gonna do is to configure the DNS server. To configure the DNS server, let's just open up the DNS, go to the services, turn off everything except. DNS, DHCP was off by default, off and off. All right, uh, the reason that we turning off everything except the thing that we want is because uh, when we have multiple servers and multiple uh, things for a specific purpose, it can, um, we can, we can have errors because it's gonna, for example, have uh, a DHCP automatically. And uh, if we have, for example, two DHCP for two different purposes, it might get confused. And uh, when it gets bigger, you can encounter lots of problems. So now let's go to the DNS, turn it on. So it's very simple. Here we put the name of the website let's say we put the domain www.google.com and here is the ip address 192.168.1.1 this has the ip address for the google and let's click on add now we have the google and the ip address for the record zero okay 
And let's add the Yahoo as well. Alright, the IP address was 192.168.1.2. And let's add it. Okay. Now, the thing that we need to do is to go here in the um, Google server. We need to set up the HTTP service for our servers. Just like everything else, we need to turn off everything for it. But, um, you know, it's not necessary right now because it's a very small simulation. If you have a bigger problem, if you have a bigger project, you should turn them off manually. But uh, in this case, I don't think it, we encounter any kind of problems. So turn on the HTTPs and in the, um, in the files that we have here is the files that we're going to show to the user when uh, they um, enter our URL, enter our domain. So in web development, uh, if you uh, have uh, any knowledge, you know that the first file, the, defi the default file that it's going to open in the, uh, in the browser when we request anything. So let's say we request google.com. The default file that it's going to open is index.html. So this is the file that I'm going to open after we enter our URL. So let's click on edit. Here is a basic uh, HTML uh, HTML code. So I'll delete everything here. And here I'm going to write welcome to Google. OK, save it and overwrite it. Let's copy this and go to the Yahoo. There isn't any other configuration that you need to do for the uh, for the HTTP service. Go to the index that HTML and here I'm going to say welcome to Okay, it's not writing. Yahoo. Okay, save it and overwrite it. Now let's test the simulation that we have created. Let's delete this text as well. And uh, go to the computer. We have a web browser here. Let's open it up and type google.com. Say go. Okay. I think we need to set the www as well. Go. Okay. You can see here. It says welcome to Google. So the address that we entered, it connected automatically from the DNS to the server that we put it. And now it is connected to the server. So let's test Yahoo as well. The www.yahoo.com. You can see it, it now connected to the Yahoo. If we uh, put the IP address directly, let's say for example 192 to 168.1, it should connect to the Google as you can see. All right, so here the DHCP, oh sorry, the HTTP connection simulation. So you can find the project file of these. Uh, in the description as um, all of the other videos that you watched in this series. Do not forget to like and subscribe because it will help me and the channel to grow faster. Thank you. Bye bye.